Welcome to another lesson in chapter five for, uh, for statistics. This is gonna be a really short one. Uh, chapter five is actually one of our shortest chapters in the entire book, right? Um, it's really piggybacking off of the things that we've talked about already in chapter four. Uh, in chapter four, we learned about how to do the, several of the graphs. We're gonna talk about the, the histogram, the dot plot, the sim wave plot, and we're gonna add the box plot today. We have mentioned the five number summary, which is one of the easiest things to get if you have your TI-84 calculator, right? You can just go in one variable stats. Uh, at the bottom of that, you get your five number summary. So just to kind of review, if you haven't been paying attention, the five number summary consists of a few things. Number one, it's the minimum, the Q2, Q1, the first quartile, 25th percentile. It's the median value, which is also known as Q2. Uh, it's the third quartile or the 75th percentile and the maximum value, which essentially is the 100th percentile, right? You get these calcul the, the easiest way to get this uh, is in your calculator. You can go ahead, put your data in L1, you go to one variable stats, you do one variable stats on your list. Uh, maybe you have a frequency list, maybe not, right? We worked on that one uh, in the last video we looked at. But this one's pretty easy. If you had to do it by hand, right? So maybe it's an exercise where you're not allowed a calculator. You're going to put all your numbers in order, right? So let's make it easy for just for just for the video sake. If I had a hundred numbers, then the if I put them in numerical order, the 25th number in the line represents the 25th percentile. The 50th number is the 50th percentile. 75, and of course, max and min are obvious. Um, so you'd put those in there, and those numbers are your five number summary. That's essentially what I would need in order to build a box plot, right? One of the things we can do is we can we can take those numbers and put them on a number line, and that's how you're going to start building your box plots. Um, before we get to the actual construction of the box plot, we need to talk about outliers. Right? Within a box plot, you've got two options on your calculator. You can even do this on your calculator. I can put the outliers in or not. But before we get to that, I need to define what an outlier officially is. An outlier, we can be very general about an outlier and say it's just not with the majority of the group. Right? It's, it's farther out. But the question is, well, how far? Where's that line? Where's, where do I get to draw a line? Or is it my opinion? Right? And it's definitely not an opinion. You can say things are different. They're not part of the same group. They're a little farther away. Those descriptions are all fair game. But when you officially say this is an outlier, you kind of need to have justified that. On the screen, you can see down here is we have fences, right? So we're gonna we're gonna create these boundaries. So up upper and lower boundaries that says, if any data falls outside of these two values, we're gonna consider those two values outliers. We get those values by following the formula right here. Lower fence, the Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, and Q3, we're gonna add that to Q3, 1.5 times the IQR. Now, a traditional outlier is considered to be one and a half standard deviations, uh, or sorry, one and a half times the IQR above Q3 and below Q1. We also have something called a far outlier. If it's an extreme value, we would consider that three IQRs above the mean, above Q3 and below Q1, All right? So we don't really get into the differences here whether we have far outliers or just outliers. Most of the time, we're gonna just use the words, the vocabulary, just outlier, right? Um, and this is a this is not the only way we'll define what we consider to be unusual observations. Okay, we are calling these outliers though. Memorize this formula. You won't get this formula on a formula sheet. Uh, you won't be able to have this around at any time. So take some time, memorize that. It's a really easy formula to learn, um, and and lock that away somewhere. So when you need an outlier you can justify that. Little tip. Now, if I'm gonna qualify something as an outlier, I kinda of have to justify that, which is this formula. But if I need to just justify it in my own head, if I'm working on something, I can create a box plot in the calculator and make it get the modified box plot and it will show me the outliers using this formula, 
when I don't have to even do the numbers. Now, it may be just as easy for me to put those numbers and do the one variable stats, or maybe harder to, or it may take longer to do the graph. It'll depend on the data. But to graph it in the calculator, same way we do a histogram, just make sure you choose the box plot, the modified box plot, the one with the two dots, and that will reveal your outliers. Same exact way, second y equals, and go through the whole process we've been doing quite a bit in class or on in other videos. And this was what we call outliers. Now back to the box plot. Uh, the box plot is going to be basically, uh, we're gonna put these numbers in. I'm gonna create my number line first. I'm gonna say it one more time. I'm going to create my number line first. I'm not gonna put the box plot down and then kind of make my numbers fit the box plot because at that point, your box plot will be whatever shape you wanted it to be. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a five number summary. And I've already put that up here now. And you, what I want you to do, take the numbers uh, right over here on, uh, well, on over here on my side, on the right side of your screen, put those numbers into L1, go to the y equal, second y equals, hit enter, choose the modified box plot image, the, the graphic icon, and then I want you to make sure that you've chosen your X list to be L1 or whichever list you use to put the numbers on the screen into. If you will go, when you finish that, go back up to the top and hit zoom nine, you're gonna see just the same image right here as you do on the screen, okay? So you'll see it on your screen. And hopefully you'll see this one outlier present down here. And that will be very similar uh, for the most part. I tried to make it pretty accurate here. And what we can see here is the five number summary with a little bit of modification, okay? Normally your minimum is the lower value right here, but it's not. The minimum value is our outlier. And what I can do is I'm gonna go back in the list. If I go back over here and I look over, say where's the smallest number, it's 12. Well, 12 is an outlier. I'm gonna be using that as the dot. Where does the bottom whisker need to fall into? I'm gonna go to my list and find the next value, and this is at 16, up from that outlier. So the whisker's gonna fall down, it's gonna drop back to whatever number is next on the list. This is Q1, then we have the median value, Q3, and of course your maximum value here. That's in box plot. One of the best things about a box plot is it's really, really simple to create. I don't have to worry about bins and bars. I don't have to worry about stacking things up. Um, I get to do just five numbers and I've got a done box plot. Okay, so it's really easy to calculate. Box plots are really great for quick comparisons between graphs so you can make lots of box plots at the same time. In fact, you could put a different distribution in L1, L2, and L3, and you could create, you could make all three box plots happen all at the same time, all on the same screen. And I could compare the distribution. Okay, so which brings us to the last point. How do I look at the box plot? Number one, box plots uh, definitely use IQR and range as an easy idea of spread. Right, clearly see that really fast. It uses the median as my center uh, shape. This is where the box plot really falls down. The box plot can do a fairly decent job of talking about symmetry, but it definitely conceals whatever shape it is the actual graph is having. The graph we have now could be, in fact, be bimodal and I'll never know it, right? But I'm looking at it this way, the median tends to fall mostly in the center of the box. The whiskers tend to be about the same lengths. When you start to notice things that are, that are skewed, I would pay attention first to the whiskers. When the whisker gets longer on one side, it's telling it's getting skewed to that end. When the median value tends to move to one side of the box, that means that you're getting potential skewedness, okay? But nothing's a guarantee here, especially when you kind of, all of it changes at the same time best thing to do is to make a box plot to describe things, but if I really need to see the shape, the box plot is not the graph I want to use. I'd use a histogram or something else. If I'm in my calculator, I'm definitely going to choose that histogram to look at shape, maybe do another box plot and see how that looks and use the box plot to describe things. When you're using the box plot to make comparisons, a lot like how we did with the segmented bar charts, I can compare them together. I can talk about percentages because we know that the whisker, the first whisker, the, the left part, that's the bottom 25%. 
The difference between the, the line in the box and the left side of the box, this part, that's your second 25%, right? Because this is the 50th percent mark, right? This section of the box is also 25%, and the upper whisker is the last 25%. So your box genuinely is broken into four parts, the four quartiles. Each of those represents 25% of the data minus any outliers. I hope that helps. Uh, the box plot is a really great plot. It's really easy to make and does a great job in comparing different distributions to each other. Okay. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know uh, and send me a message and we'll, I'll try to answer this as soon as I can.